In this video, I will be talking about the Three Kingdoms period of China, focusing on the many talented heroes of that time. Xia Hao Yuan was a prominent member of the Xia Hao clan, much like his older cousin Xia Had Dun. He became a veteran of many battles and earned fame as he served his distant cousin Tao Tao's Kingdom of Wei. He was born in the Anhui province in an unknown year. In his youth, he took the blame for the mischievous young Tao Tao on at least one occasion, who then later repaid the favour by helping him escape his punishment. Years later, a famine broke out in his area, forcing him to sacrifice a family member. He begrudgingly picked his youngest son over his dead younger brother's orphan daughter, who I presume he vowed to take good care of. In the year 190, he joined up with Tao Tao, who raised an army to fight the tyrant Dong Zhuo, where he was promoted to important roles within the faction. Ten years later, he participated in the successful campaign against Yuan Shao, but when the fighting stopped, Tao Tao's army found themselves running out of food fast. Xia Hao Yuan was the one responsible for organising the supply lines, which happened to arrive in time, just before the army's low morale began to take effect. In 206, Xia Hao Yuan was sent by Tao Tao to reinforce the unsuccessful Yu Jin with suppressing a rebellion. With his help, they were able to swiftly put an end to the rabble, whilst also capturing a surprising amount of rebels in the process. Xia Hao Yuan earned a reputation around this time within Tao Tao's army, for the speed at which he could organise his units and the seemingly countless flank manoeuvres he would perform on the battlefield. Xia Hao Yuan's organisation, precision and speed made him a perfect candidate for responding to internal uprisings that would require immediate attention. As such, he spent the next three years in administrative duties, where he quelled multiple rebellions. The first was a small band of yellow turban rebels that caused trouble in a nearby commandery. Innocents were being killed and robbed, so Xia Hao Yuan took a troop of soldiers restoring order to the local cities and eventually executed the rebel leader. After Tao Tao's defeat at Qi Bi in 209, some sought the opportunity to rise up. Xia Hao Yuan was successful when he was sent to quell a rebellion in the province he grew up in. This earned him a promotion, giving him a new authority which he then used to form a personalised unit with Xu Huang. They travelled north to suppress more rebels where they went on a bit of a rampage taking over 20 camps. The two Wei generals cut their way through the rebels until they reached their headquarters where they controversially slaughtered the entire population, killing the leader in the process. Before the Battle of Chu Bi, Tao Tao had to take precautions against Ma Teng, who resided to the northwest of the Wei Kingdom. To prevent being attacked from behind by the threatening enemy army, Tao Tao tricked Ma Teng with an invitation for promotion, but actually imprisoned him and some of his family members instead. This ploy safeguarded Tao Tao from a surprise attack, as Ma Teng's son Ma Chao would not risk attacking Wei so long as his father was held hostage. The Wei Kingdom's southern campaign ended in failure, all the while civil unrest was on the rise in the northwest. Going against the advice of Gao Ru, Tao Tao pressed an attack on Zhang Lu in Hanzhong in the year 211. This invasion incited Ma Chao to react, for he had secretly formed a coalition with the region's leaders, who then engaged Tao Tao once he entered their territory at the Battle of Tong Pass. After a short but complicated engagement, Tao Tao emerged victorious. Ma Chao fled to Hanzhong, where he quickly assembled a few thousand men to return to battle. Xi Hao Yuan countered this by appointing Zhang He 5,000 men to engage Ma Chao's raid on a nearby battalion, which successfully forced him to retreat. With Ma Chao out of the way, the coalition began to crumble. Xi Hao Yuan pressed an attack against Han Sui, capturing his supply line, which was left exposed when he fled. Yuan was urged by his advisors to attack one of two enemy positions, but he refused, instead opting for a third choice. He led a small but agile unit to the homeland of many of Han Sui's soldiers, where he raided the tribes, torching buildings and killing innocents. This dreadful strategy forced Han Sui to react, where Xia Hao Yuan could engage his army in open ground. Xia Hao Yuan scored a credible victory against Han Sui's much larger army. Many chieftains of the various tribes were either captured or fled to Han Zhong for refuge, just like many of the common people had before them since the engagement at Tong Pass. The Han Imperial Court appointed Xia Hao Yuan as the main authority in the area. They also ordered the execution of Ma Teng and his family who were still in the city. 
Ma Chao and the other members of the Ma clan had bounties placed on their heads as a result. Shia Hao Yuan's new position made him responsible for dealing with a self-proclaimed king that resided in the region, who had acted independently from the empire now for decades. Yuan was able to seize control of the county within months, whilst executing the imposter king and his subordinates. Tao Tao wrote a letter of congratulations to Shia Hao Yuan, which read, Song Jian had been causing trouble for over 30 years. Shia Hao Yuan eliminated him in one movement and made an unprecedented achievement. Confucius once said, I cannot do as well as you. Shia Hao Yuan had completely pacified all of the tribes in the region by the year 216 and led them in a grand presentation dedicated to Tao Tao, who had arrived for his invasion of Zhang Lu at Hanzhong. Shia Hao Yuan would watch over the fearful tribal chiefs as they introduced themselves to their new king. Tao Tao successfully conquered Hanzhong before retiring to the city of Yi. Shia Hao Yuan was left in charge of Hanzhong commandery, where he, Zhang He and Xu Huang undertook the difficult task of calming the resentful populace, which I can't imagine went over very smoothly. A year passed before Liu Bei invaded Hanzhong, and it was another year until the deadlock between the two forces was eventually broken. Shi Hao Yuan's victory streak was bound to come to an end one day, just like Tao Tao had once predicted. The Shu general Huang Zhong launched a downhill surprise attack where Shi Hao Yuan was killed in combat. Zhang He and the others fled the area whilst Xu scored a victory, liberating the city of Hanzhong. If you enjoyed my video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.